They're coming to get you, Barbara. Welcome back to another tantalizing edition of Shrek Talk. As always, I am here with you today on our journey. My name is Mr. Joshua, if this is your first time, and uh, uh, with me as always is... Shrek. <laughs> uh, we're, if this is your first time joining us, uh, we're, we're doing something different this time. It's kind of a new thing. We're going on with the theme. If you've been with us before, uh, hopefully you're, you're ready for this long ride we're about to start. Uh, we're going to kind of do an interesting thing where we go back in time a little bit and look at uh, the, the five last previous full decades. Uh, so we're going to be starting with the 1960s and going all the way to through uh, the 2000s. Um, and just going to explore some different aspects of it. We have a few different sections we're going to go on. And uh, just going to be very broad, kind of a more of a broad overview of the, the eras on things we're interested in and some things that happen, uh, obviously. you have anything you'd like to say on our... Yeah, we, we've broken this down into five different parts. Uh, so the first event, first part is going to be current events, the events that shape the decade. The next event, the next section is going to be music, the music that made the decade. Then the third section is movies and TV, popular movies and TV shows that were significant. Sports is our fourth category. The sports events are moments that define the decade. And our last one is culture, the phases, crazes, and fashions that made the decade, kind of the catch-all subject. So um, I think today we're going to start with our first decade. Yeah, we're going to go with uh, something that one, probably one of the ones I was most interested in doing and, and everything. Uh, we're going to go with the 60s, the 1960s. Um, you know, there's a lot of things going on in the, that time. So, you know, since to really understand what the, the era and uh, the other aspects of things we're going to talk about from, um, you know, we've got to start right off with these current events here because this really defines what happened in the era and how we... We started the era and how we finished the era and the differences in, in culture. And for the most part, we're going to be talking about uh, Western culture, specifically American, because we're, we're American. Okay. And obviously, that's what we know. Um, but there'll be some other little things that thrown in there, obviously, that affected the world, especially since at this stage, uh, America we really did have a big influence on what was going on in the world. We were, you know, uh, coming out of the 50s, a very prosperous era for us, and, and coming into the 60s, very dominant in the world, having a, a big rivalry going on with uh, the USSR. Um, basically the the height of the cold war um i don't know i, I would say the 50s and the 60s combined no, it's both. about the 60s i mean the cold war the cold war started in the late 40s it ended in the late 80s so the 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 late 60s is right in the middle of that period and and you'll see from some of our current events it was the hottest period um of the time kind of for the cold war you know everything kind of built up to what some of the events that happened in the 1960s and then they cooled down again in the 1970s and kind of sparked back up in the 1980s but uh, the 1960s was definitely the height of the Cold War this is 1943 World War II this is 1916 World War I 1863 Civil War this is like right at the height of the Cold War yeah and and so you, you have a lot of things that go along with that I mean if I had to pick you know the number one thing that I think goes along with that um, just as a memorable event from it, uh, we're going to go right right to the space race. Um, the space race, I think, really defined um, the whole era at the start of the 60s. I mean, Sputnik was launched in, what, 59? 57. 57. Uh, so it only started a few years before. And uh, we were really... Yuri Gagarin was the first man in space, and he started in, you know, 1961. So this was, I mean, and it ran through the entire decade. Um, you know, the space race was just one part of the Cold War. The Cold War kind of was everything. It was a propaganda campaign. It was, a, you know, a political kind of war that was going on. Not really a shooting war, um, 
but everything that was about a culture a war of ideologies it, it was exactly a war of ideologies and the space race kind of defined that um, the rest of the world was looking on at the two superpowers going at it you know trying to put a man on the moon and that was the ultimate goal of this and it would kind of give you that prestige of seeing look look how better how much better our system is than theirs we could do this and they couldn't yeah or we did it first yeah and um, i mean huge impacts on our world obviously talking about the advances in technology communications cell um, phones cell phones GPSs, every, all of these things Google are Earth, all of that i mean there's thousands of satellites in space and this is all came from that era when we didn't you know everything was still done by hand essentially and we were dealing with technology that was less than a game boy you yeah, know, so I, I mean, think, it's pretty uh, amazing. I, think I read somewhere the Apollo Eleven spacecraft had less computing power than an average luxury car today. Yeah. So, and, and we took that to the moon. Yeah, and mentioning Apollo Eleven, obviously, I had the the culmination of that space race, uh, essentially being the landing on the moon with Apollo Eleven. Um, I, I mean, what more do you need to say? Uh, the, everyone should know this event. If like, if you haven't heard about this. It kind of is a big thing. Yeah, it's, it's it's kind of a big thing. But, you know, that's only one aspect uh, of we had uh, going inside of the... I, I would like to bring up the... Um, we were talking about the height of the Cold War. I would say the height of the Cold War, the time when it was the worst, occurred in 1962, specifically the 16th of October to the 28th of October, uh, in a little place called Cuba. Yeah, and that was exactly where I was going with this. I would say that was the height of the tensions uh, during that era was, was when we ha- had this, this standoff kind of with, with uh, the Soviet Union relating to Cuba and uh, them putting missiles on there. Nikita obviously. Khrushchev had brought in missiles, unbeknownst to us, uh, medium-range, short-range missiles that could hit the United States from Cuba. Um, we found out about this because of a U-2 flyover, and uh, we basically told him, um, that's not going to happen. You're not putting nukes in Cuba. And Khrushchev and the Soviet Union said, stop us. So uh, this, I mean, if you read about what actually happened here, we came within a, you know, a hair's breadth of all-out war between us and the Soviet Union. Uh, it got really close. And if it had not been for some back-channel communications, uh, it could have ended in disaster. One mistake could have caused a full-scale event and uh you know when you look at the cold war you look at the history of our world it's it's really unfathomable that we've had these these weapons and we haven't destroyed ourselves yet and you know the cuban missile crisis in 1962 was the closest that we ever came to it and we did come very very close so far realize how close so so far (laughs) Uh, But moving past that, um, yeah, another big event. So we had a lot of things going on with that. And, I mean, we can even talk about um, another big event I want to relate that's that's related to the Cold War in its own way, Uh, the war we had with Vietnam, our interaction with Vietnam, and and essentially, you know, a a changing point in uh, perceptions of America and our place in the world and how we should fit in. And there, obviously there's a lot of debate about the war. Uh, we'd go on, would it ended in 74? 75 is when finally North Vietnam took over. We pulled out in 73, I believe. Uh, and we kind of, I mean, we were sending advisors and stuff like that in the 50s, but it wouldn't get to be real big until about 1964, August of that year, with the Gulf of Tonkin incident. Um, and that's when things kind of really heated up. And this kind of gives you an idea of what the Cold War was actually like. It wasn't a war where you know shots were actually fired between the superpowers but this battle this war was a proxy war the united states was aiding south vietnam vietnam we were sending troops in there and then the soviet union was aiding north vietnam the communist country um, as well as china and they were throwing supplies and stuff in there so um you know it was kind of a a, a political uh, chess game where we were trying to see if we could you know, make sure that democracy is safe in Southeast Asia. And it really went out of control pretty quickly. Um, you know, lasted well into the 70s, as we've seen. And uh, we're still feeling the after effects of what happened uh, because of that to this day. Yeah. And I mean, just another event. And I mean, there's so many we could talk about. I only want to, I don't want to just spend our only time here talking about, but one last thing I want to mention uh, about the Cold War is the Berlin Wall. We had the raising of the Berlin Wall in the 60s as well and I mean just thinking about all these events like if these aren't sounding familiar if you're not really from well known on what happened on these I'm I'm very surprised because it's there's such these 
this change in our culture. We started to see in the 60s a big change, and part of it was inspired by our conflict um, w- with the USSR. We even had in the 50s, where it was in that the area of McCarthyism, where yes. you know we had people getting black. There's so many things going on um, from the peaceful prosperity that was you know the perception of life after um, the World war, war ended, and, yeah, after World War II ended. Uh, and a couple other events that um, you know we should obviously mention: uh, assassinations. The there's no decade that I can find in the entirety of human history where there is so much, you know, um, turmoil across the world, especially here in the United States, but across the world, so much turmoil in the 1960s. And you can see it in riots, um, you know, in the streets. And, you know, we, we lost, um, you know, three prominent people to assassinations in that decade. Um, John F. Kennedy was assassinated on November 22nd, 1963 uh, by Lee Harvey Oswald. Uh, then we lost Martin Luther King in 1968. Um, he died on April 4th, 1968. And then also just a couple months later, that June 6th, 1968, Robert F. Kennedy, John F. Kennedy's son, was ass- or brother, was assassinated. Um, you know, it was just, that was the way the world was. I, I, I read these forums about people talking about how crazy the world is today and how, you know, they don't know. I actually had somebody talking about how in the 1960s they didn't know what uh, a tumultuous world was, you know, and we do now, and they have nothing on us. Go back and read your 1960s history. 1960s was the craziest decade, uh, like I said, in in the history of mankind that I know of. There's so much change going on. I mean, with advances in technology that were happening as well, we're having a huge impact uh, on the world. I mean, in the the 60s, there's so many people more. I mean, cars were becoming much more of a common thing. It wasn't. It was definitely all over the United States. I think we still had like one uh, one half of all the world's vehicles at this point. Um, there was so many things happening. And, and the civil rights movement. The civil rights movement happened. Was huge. You had to do with that. The, you know, we we had advances in technology, like the the DNA code was finally unlocked in the '60s. You know, so science was taking leaps and bounds. Still, um, we had the 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 birth of the modern serial killers with their with the media hype and everything p- propelling the stories. Yeah, with the Boston Strangler. The Boston Strangler. You had the Zodiac Killer. You had the the Manson family uh, murders right at the end that really capped off the end of the decade to kind of show how how it, different it was from the start of it. And, um, you know, it's just this, this decade was really a lot of change happened from 1960 to 1969. The, the state of America and the world vastly Irrevo- did, irrevocably yeah. changed. Yeah. I mean, it was the world before 1960 was not the same world as you saw in 1970. Yeah. 1959 Medical and advances. 1970 was a completely different world. Yeah. I think the first heart transplant There's, was done in that decade. Yeah. So many things yeah. happening. Um, and, and so I really, I think that these events are what's going to shape all the other stuff we talked about here. Um, from the, you know, because I think the, re- the a lot of the other things in our list, um, and pretty much everything else in our list is related. They all relate to current events and what was happening in the world. I mean, because our our next category that that we're going to go into here is music. And the the people who making this music are part of this changing society. You're seeing the advent, the different styles from the beginning of the the, the '60s, without it really being a, a era dominated by albums with bad singles, and there wasn't really a lot. Um, to the advent of so many new styles and it was of music, like, it was like a one hit wonder kind of time. Yeah, at the um, start, and it was like doo wop and the the rock and roll that you find in the fifties, the Elvises, the you know the Chubby Checkers, that kind of music. Yeah, and it was just a one off kind of single kind of thing. Yeah, and you had bands like you know at the beginning of the era, you had like the surf rock bands, like the the early Beach Boys um, and the Ventur- Venturas or whatever Venturas. Um, so many like. Styles at the beginning of the era, you had, you had, I mean, the Motown was just starting to to really become into it. Yeah, you, you had a lot of bands like uh, James Brown and stuff uh, at the beginning of the era. Um, Aretha Franklin would come in later. I mean, you, you just had so many different bands like the Temptations, the Supremes, so these genres at the beginning. And you think about where we kind of came out at the end of the '70s in similar styles. So, like, you had the surf rock and, end of the uh, '60s. You know, <laughs> six, excuse me. Uh, you have like the the surf rock at the beginning. At the end, you got psychedelic rock going on. You got the advent, the folk. beginning of folk, hard rock. So many genres coming in. Um, and, and Motown at the end. You know, we we got funk and other genres coming out that. By the it's they were changing with the times with all these events going on, 
and I mean, there's just so many legendary artists that came out of this era, you know, from obviously the the, the biggest band we we, we can talk February about. February ninth, nineteen sixty four, sixty three, the Ed Sullivan Show. Oh, we're talking about when it, when Beatlemania hit America. Beatles, yeah. Um, yeah, the Beatles, obviously the the most important band of the decade across all genres because they revolutionized um, the era and basically changed started to change it towards an album oriented uh, type fashion. Oh, uh, they did so much more than that. Well, but, yeah. I mean, if you want, go back. We have an episode from our original series called "Music's Greatest Decades." Uh, greatest decade where we talk about a lot of the stuff that happened in the 1960s especially the late 60s um, 66 on and you know there's so many things that happened in those late 60 era uh, you know late 60s day years I guess you could say uh, I'm kind of fumbling here uh, just so much that we couldn't go over in the, the span of time that we're going to do it uh, but we wanted to kind of give a broad overview of the music in the 1960s uh, the change in popular music was definitely a big thing uh, like you said, where we started out in the nineteen, you know, in nineteen sixty, where we got to in nineteen sixty nine was a completely different decade in music. Um, oh, absolutely! Yeah, everything had changed uh, across the board in music during that decade. Um, you know, and a lot of that was part of um, the hippie generation, and the music was the soundtrack to the revolution. Yeah, I, in a way, I absolutely, very it is. much. You had Woodstock, and you know, the Summer of Love, and music. You know, Monterey Pop Festival. Music was was seen as a, uh, a kind of a liberating force for uh, a this personal. Yeah, it's a, uh, instead of just being entertainment, it was now very much more a, a personal art form. I mean, I think of something you know we'll talk about later when we get to movies, films like Easy Rider that started using u- utilizing these popular songs as the music in the film to score their life, it, it, which is you know that movie itself is meant to be a representation of, of this culture that that was developing in the late sixties, and I think that music went to being something much more personal during this time. It, you know, I, I don't, I can't, I don't know. Obviously, it just wasn't I was, something that was in the background. Yeah, that was on. You know, and something that, you know before kind of only serious musicians really cared about music. Music became an experience. It became much more than just you know something to pass the time. It, it was, a, it was a life. It was something that, you know, people would go on tour and follow bands around. It was a, you know, it was, like I said, it was part of their life. Music was now life. It had turned from a passing fancy into something very, very important. Like and, I said, the soundtrack to a revolution. It crossed all genres. I mean, like looking at looking at country, for example. The, you know, the, the, the artists that would come out in this area, obviously, you know, now we talk about Johnny Cash and we see him as this legendary figure. But this was when he was getting his, his, his big start, you know. This is when he was starting to become real. Well, he kind of started in the 50s. Well, he did, but this but, is when he really started to hit his, his, his yeah, he landmark. Yeah, he became a kind of a superstar at this point. Yeah, and he be, and, and I, I think you had other artists in that at time, like um, you know Buck Owens and Merle Haggard, that, that also have this legendary status now these days. Obviously, people like Patsy Cline as well. Um, but everything, even in there, in, in folk, we, t- we haven't mentioned Bob Dylan, but Bob Dylan's influence on the genre uh, of not only folk music, but rock and roll uh, as well, I think, really you started to see these singer-songwriters coming out who would have a great impact um not just within folk but within within rock as well um and and then you know we started to see especially in the you know the late 60s a, a more of a an aggressive take on music i would say uh people putting a little more passion uh into it not to say not more are you talking about like Hendrix, The Who. I'm talking about yeah, the advent you know, of Zeppelin, the, of, of the expressive hard rock and roll, and, and putting you know reflection of their feelings in a, a more aggressive manner, not just like you know like singer songwriting singer songwriting types like Joni Mitchell, but somebody who's really like trying to express the emotion of it as well um, through the music, and obviously that's a genre we we were really big fans of so obviously it's gonna we're gonna have a little bit more to say about that but even that like everything was so great and how it how it developed and start you start to see the development of where we were going you know obviously there's still a lot of things to come you know not to underwrite the music that came out in the 50s even though there's not a whole lot that i'm a huge fan of or the music that came after in the 70s 80s you know as we go through the decades we'll talk about that but this is where it starts this is where music gets great this is where for me modern music is born Yes, modern music was born in the 1960s, and I would I would even venture to say modern music was born on February 9th, 
on the Ed Sullivan Show. The start of Beatlemania. Perhaps. Mania, I think I, it was the start of modern music. I don't know, because other people were still getting their starts already, but yeah, I mean, I could see the argument. I'm not going to disagree. That's where we went for from a, a, you know, a genre or music being a, a pastime, a casual thing, to it being a, a passion, a livelihood, a, um, you know, something that you live your life trying to find the next great album kind of thing. And I think that's the you know the most important thing we can say. I mean, there's nothing really more we can define about this genre, this this genre, this era's music, the '60s. What happened? Um, you know, I would I, I would definitely by the statements we've made earlier, pretty much argue it is the most important musical uh, decade of all the ones we're going to go through. Regardless of how I feel about whatever came after, none of that would have been there if it hadn't been for the the '60s. And what more can you say? And as we move on to our next subject and just leave with music, like I said already, go and check out our older, older episode, Music's Greatest Decade. We get into a lot of the details about the late 1960s and the music that was involved in that uh, and that kind of transformation that we were just talking about. So now let's go to your favorite topic, movies and TV. Movies and TV. Well, yeah, these are definitely where I'm at. Um, in fact, it was a little hard for me to put these into one category. Um, so I'm kind of going to go through a lot of things I think were good as we're talking about it. Um, because I think this era is the we get the end of the um, well, just talking about film since that's you know what I definitely my biggest passions in life is you had the end of the the golden era of Hollywood. You started seeing the production, the studio productions, completely being ran by the producers and committees and things like that. Um, ending and you know you see a, a transition era where we start to get to the start of new Hollywood um, where you know writers and, and and like screenwriters would become directors more commonly and do both it was it was something where people's personal visions would start to become more of a thing and um, you know we have the ending of the production code in the the 1960s so no longer were these limits on what kind of things we could do I believe it was in 68 we got the rating system um, so, you know, now we could have all content in film. We just put these ratings on so people knew what they were getting into. And I think, you know, it's definitely not... I, I mean, what's your opinion before I go any further? I mean, I know you're not the hugest fan of the decade uh, as far as film, uh, on the same level I am at least, but I know there's some films you love from this era. Yeah, there's some really good films from this era. Um, you know, obviously, them. it's along with music, this was kind of the start of modern filmmaking. Um, and you see a lot of these movies that are still being made today you know sequels to them are still being made today like planet of the apes came out on uh, april 3rd 1968 funny 2001 a space odyssey also came out on the same exact day um you know you've got well uh, just uh pause that since we're talking about sci-fi um so you know before we move on to any other genres that you're going to mention uh sci-fi i mean this is definitely at the start of the era you, you had it was kind of a joke it wasn't taken seriously as a, as an art form like on um, what you could do with it you still had the crazy aliens guys in costumes bad spaceships special effects it was all no science involved in it yeah it was all still that um the 1950s kind of era was all about like science fiction as um you know the martians represented you know the Soviet Union, and they're trying to take over the world, and this and that. It was cheap pulp entertainment. Yeah, it, was it was the equivalent of a pulp, of a pulp really comic, was. yeah. Um, very little from you know the 1950s was any good. There are some as, winners, yeah, yeah, yeah but but, but it really wasn't. Wise, and then you get these movies like 2001, which is a beautiful art film. Um, you know the music score, the um, you know the visual effects, the cinematography, everything about that movie is really beautiful. And then you get something like you know Planet of the Apes with these great, amazing makeup effects, and you also get you know a really good kind of story that came out of it that was much more um, you know less pulpy and ooh the bad Ruskies kind of thing and more you know about the follies of mankind yeah and, and i think that was great now i was sorry i interrupted you what was that thought you were having earlier i just had to get in my thoughts on sci-fi now <laughs> so but i mean you get um another big one you know the horror genre i think the first modern horror movie came out in 1968 as well night of the living dead well um, i would disagree i would say in 1960 you had the real the birth of the modern horror film you had psycho, with psycho yes but um it, it, it obviously it was still really withheld and, and i think in ways that it works for it because you know nowadays with everything so blatantly in front of you this this kind of held back and mystery and, and off uh, you know off camera things and shots of other things happening obviously the shower scene is iconic um but i would say you know in a way 
that's where it started, but they were still restrained. And yes, you do have Night of the Dead, which I could see the argument for being the be- the, the first modern horror film. People consider the gore extremely excessive, um, the dark tone of the film, uh, especially uh, the way the whole movie plays out. Uh, you know, from beginning to end is is really unlike other types of horror films where, where they a lot of them had happy endings a lot of them weren't really that dark they were just atmospheric um you know thinking of like the hammer films which i'm also a huge fan of but a lot of it was very very gothic horror yeah like for most of the decade you saw the vincent price Edgar Allan poe stories yeah you know pit in the pendulum um the black cat i think was one of them as well um you know and you've seen by the end of the decade that had completely changed when you saw night of the living dead you're like okay Horror is operating on an entirely different and, level, and within a couple of years, it would. I I would think. I think it really jumps exponentially quick from there. Within a couple of years, you had some of the, like Lucio Fushi, Fushi or whatever his name is, the Italian film with the, the massive gore films he made, um, and it really quickly the scales were amped yeah. after that. But that's really the start, and and so I can see that. But you know, I'm gonna say the seed was planted with Psycho, but horror genre same thing you know in all films we still had a lot of things going on in this era I mean the the end of the epic era was at the beginning of the 60s you know with Lawrence of Arabia and Cleopatra and things like that Dr. Zhivago you had these things ending you know you had musicals still ruling the market I mean we had in 64, 65 uh, back to back years we had My Fair Lady and Sound of Music and then back in 61 West Side Story so obviously musicals I mean, Oscar for best picture. best picture you know so obviously these films were still popular too but you know it, it was a, a genre that was also kind of moving on um, and would become less popular and um, as we kind of hit a more gritty era by the time we're at the 70s um, and, and so there was you know so many classics that came out of this we had the end of the slapstick era with films like it's a mad 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 world which is still classic is that how many mads uh, I think it's like five uh, yes five mads um, and then the apartment winning best picture in 1960 I'm a huge Billy Wilder fan Jack Lemmon had a great point so you had a, a lot of different things but it, it all kind of changed in, in 1967 I believe it was with Bonnie and Clyde Bonnie and Clyde is considered the first like modern era Hollywood film where the, you know the, it was it was also considered really excessive and gory, just not as a, as a horror film. It was the violent nature, the unredeeming qualities of the characters really changed the genre. And I actually, I'm not really a huge fan of this film. Um, I know a lot of people love it. It, it. it doesn't really do much for me, and I I think it really affected the the, the next decade of film that was going to come, which. You know, yeah. I, I we'll get to that at another point, we'll get but to that in the next one. but you know, it's it definitely is the the first big film in the new Hollywood era, um, and so again transition. You know, this is a transitory period from what was to with all the new modern technologies and sensibilities, and um, you know, I think that's that's what makes it so great, such a great decade for film. You have the the fun stuff at the beginning and the the whimsical with those with those musicals and those big epic films productions, and then you do start to see the gritty modern filmmaking that you would see through the seventies, eighties, and nineties that was more natural to life and and things like that, and and not such a production. Um, so I I think you know that's what makes it such a special era, um, and. Arguably, I think it's again the most important era for like a lot of things in this one. Um, most important era for movies, but let's yeah. go on to the other part. The TV, television. TV also same thing. Te- people were starting to get televisions in abundance. Um, this was becoming more a thing. You still, you know, the network still ruled. Um, obviously, I don't think cable came in until the. No, it was just. Ne- I mean, for most 70s. of the decade, pretty much, it was black and white. You know, towards the end, you got a lot more color television. Uh, but black and white for the most part, and it was all network TV, the big three: yeah. NBC, CBS, and NBC. And that and that was what you had. And they had, a, you know, there was so many different things, a lot of variety shows, lots of news programs, and that was your option. So the shows of that era, understandably, were big. You know, not not like the legendary status that I Love Lucy had in the fifties, where every American pretty much watched it every week. Half of the population who had TVs would watch it. The, these shows, though, would stand out. I mean, starting off, even though it started in 59 and really had its stride in the, in the 70s, in the uh, 60s, 60s uh, Twilight Zone. Um, I think yeah, it was on from 59 to, I think, 64. 64. It was 64. Uh, it did 156 episodes. So it was, uh, you know, still to this day, you get marathons of Twilight Zone. Every New Year's, yeah. there's a marathon. Yeah, Fourth of July. For, they do it all the time. It, it's People be- love Twilight Zone still to this day. 
And this was obviously 50 years. This is over 50 years since the show has ended. Yeah, and I mean, it's been... How many... They've made two remakes of it. We've had very... Two sim- remakes. We've made, they've made a movie about they've it. They've had very similar, yeah. you know, shows. I think they're talking about trying to do it again. And nothing, obviously, these episodes are legendary. Nothing compares to them. There, there's a reason they stand out and people talk about the show. And I think that's, you know, you started the decade great and you had so many other great shows that would come out... Um, in the decade, and you know, we, our, our, you know, we'll, we'll say that it's a sci-fi show. That's how we'll define Twilight Zone. And I think this yeah. was doing be- sci-fi better than movies were at the beginning of the era, um, at the beginning of the sixties. Oh, this was sure. really handling the material in a much better way. One of the key things is Rod Serling, who's the guy who came up with the Twilight Zone, wrote the vast majority of the episodes. He's that guy that's usually smoking a cigarette in the beginning of the episode, and talking, you know, talking in the beginning, talking in the end. Um, he was actually one of the people who wrote the Planet of the Apes. So next time you watch the Planet of the Apes, watch the end of that, and you can totally see that it's you know right in the vein of Rod Serling. And, yeah, and it fits in. And so, and, and I think you know, I would say this is better. I mean, in the '60s, we would also get uh, 1963. Uh, it really wouldn't hit the states for a while, but popular show in Britain that's now very popular worldwide. Doctor Who would premiere, um, and then the day that JFK got J- day of, it was actually they re-aired it the following night because most people didn't get to watch it. Um, and then we ended up with the um, the show that obviously we're gonna talk about a lot. But well, there's another one I want to kind of bring up is 1966. You got um, uh, through 1968, very very popular show at the time was the Batman show Batman uh, with uh, Adam West who the late great Adam West who we just lost and then uh, Burt Ward as Robin big show Vincent Price was Egghead um, Cesar Romero was the Joker uh, Lee Merriweather as Catwoman Eartha Kitt as Catwoman there was actually three Catwomans in the decade and this kind of was one of those cross genre things where it was so popular in the first season that they actually made a movie um, while the show was still going on so it was kind of like you know, if you remember back in the 90s, the X-Files was really popular and they came out with a movie in between seasons kind of thing. This was, I think, the first time that that had ever happened, where you went from TV show, that transition from TV show to movie. Um, so Batman was hugely popular, but I didn't want to step on your feet because I know which one you're going to go to next. Well, obviously, since you held me up, there's no point in, in going to it right away. We might as well just talk about it since you mentioned Batman, and I think it has this fun, lively spirit that people are so surprised about nowadays when they watch it. I mean, obviously, it's really campy, really cheesy. Even at the time, it was. But a lot of TV was very fun and, and, and playful in that sense at the time. A lot of the shows that are really remembered from this era carried that same kind of mindset with it. You had Real life, real life was so crazy in the 1960s that you needed a break from that, you know, the seriousness of the the civil rights movement, the Vietnam War, you know, you needed that kind of break from all the the turmoil that was going on. And you'd go home and you'd watch, you know, holy rusted metal Batman. And well, and and beyond that, not even just in in the family stuff like Batman and and kid stuff like Jetsons and Flintstones, these are obviously legendary from there. But in your adult shows too, you had shows like The Munsters and The Addams Family, which were just goofy. You had Get Smart, Hogan's Heroes. I mean, when you think about these shows, they're playful, they're silly. Like, I mean, Hogan's Heroes dealing about prisoners of war, and it's a comedy with like comedic German characters and stuff. Like, it's an odd thing. Colonel Clink. Colonel Clink. Um, you know, and it's and it's such a weird thing. Gilligan's Island was definitely oh, a, 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 a you know a huge popular show in the era. And these, this is what was on TV. I mean, you had some more serious stuff like, like you know, Twilight Zone we mentioned. Mission Impossible was a big show in the era as well. Um, I mean, but it was it was mainly Bewitched and I Dream a Genie and so all of these shows that, that now we, we think of as silly and fun. And that was all of TV for the most part. Those were all the sitcoms that came out. There wasn't... Oh, besides that, you had news. And there was some dramas, obviously. I, I didn't look up any of the westerns because I didn't watch any of that stuff. But I know there was, like, Have Gun, Will Travel and... Bonanza was in, it was Bonanza, Bonanza in the six sixties, Gunsmoke, all those shows, you know. So there was other shows, but I mean, these were the shows that now have this legendary size because it was fun. And even though shows weren't really dark and serious, they were just had morals and values and were drama, but not nothing dark. Obviously, this was still TV hadn't reached there that movies were starting to get to it by the end, even by the end of the decade. Um, but I, I think. Now that we've covered all that, we can talk about the show that that changed the landscape of our lives. And obviously, you know, if you've ever September listened to 8th, us, nineteen sixty-six. If you've ever Man listened Mothers, to us, you should have already known birthday, I believe. what this is. It's her thirty-ninth birthday. I think it premiered. And that is the premiere of the original series of Star Trek. Um, 
you know, one of the two most important things in my life from, uh, you know, outside of like family and friends and stuff, um, cultural things. And it, it changed a lot of people's lives, obviously not just ours. It, it, um, you know, obviously would be responsible for a lot of things that'll come up later. We talk about, um, in different decades and, uh, what more can you say about it? It's classic, you know, uh, every it's Star Trek we've done enough talking about it that we don't need to say anything more about it. So kind of move on now yeah. to our subject number four. Sports. Yeah. Sports. So, you know, I, I only have one thing, you know, if I, I do, I'm a really huge fan of sports. Uh, but, uh, when we do sports here through the decades, it's going to be kind of a little bit different than everything else we do. Um, because, when it you know comes down to it, the Olympics are the only kind of sports I really care about um, that I feel like talking about. I mean, I'm a huge hockey fan, and I love my Penguins. Um, but Olympics are to me are sports. When you talk about sports, that's the only real sports worth talking about, in my opinion. So my I'm going to do a section here where I just go through each of the Olympics we have, uh, talk about a little bit of it, you know, give a couple little facts about each one, because I think these are also reflections of everything else going on in the world, just like the music, the the movies and TV. All of these things are affected by the world, and they all relate to each other. Um, so and I will just kind of sit back here with my butt on my hands, <laughs> my hands on my butt, so something like that, sitting on my hands. I'm sure you can pop in a wisecrack every now and again. Um, so starting in 1960, we had the, the first uh, Olympics of the decade. It was the Winter Olympics in Squaw Valley, California. Um, you know, it was actually, uh, again, politics coming into it. Uh, the U.S. threatened no visas for communist countries until the IOC, the International Olympic Committee, stepped in and said, well, if you're going to do that, then we're not going to allow you guys to host it. And, you know, it, it was this thing of, well, politics are already coming into our sports, but that's part of what makes the Olympics great is, for the most part, they try and stay out of it, but obviously bleed-throughs happen. Um, you know... Other things happened in that one. New events were introduced, biathlon. There was no bobsledding, you know, but it's standard. Nothing beyond that that little tidbit there. Uh, in 1960, though, we had the, uh, you know, our first Summer Olympics, since most people only seem to care about the Summer Olympics, and that's uh, in Rome. Um, Rome had originally had it in 1908, actually, but it was canceled due to Mount Vesuvius's eruption in 1906. So they finally got to host it 40 years, over 40 years later, almost, actually over 50 years later. Um, for me, there was, you know, some events here that happened. People obviously talk about Cassius Clay, who would later become known as Muhammad Ali, uh, you know, very famous boxer. Maybe you've heard of him. Um, and there was one thing, though, that me that really stands out for this, which was uh, there was the first time a uh, black African had won a medal at the Olympics, and it was a guy, uh, obviously I'm not sure if I'm going to pronounce his name, but his name was Abebe Bakila, and he actually ran the marathon barefoot and won. Um, if, he was from Ethiopia, and it was just this monumentous event. It's one of those things we talk about now in, Olymp in Olympic sports history. Like, the guy won the marathon barefoot, and these guys couldn't keep up with him in shoes that are supposed to help you run faster. So, I mean, it's pretty pretty monumentous uh, right there. But, you know, again, 1964, we had it in Innsbruck, Austria, which was, uh, you know, our next Winter Olympics. There's actually a lot of deaths that happened in this one um, where there was, like, two athletes that died during training, um, and then three – but three years earlier, actually, after the 1960 and 1961, there was a plane crash, and all 18 of the U.S. figure skaters that were, like, the high-level competitors died, and it, like, totally destroyed our, um, like, ability to play the sport. I don't even think we meddled um, in that, and uh, it was actually odd because – East and West Germany entered as a combined team as well. It would be the last time they would do this, but it was 1964, and they still played as a combined team, which is rather surprising. That was after the Berlin Wall went up. Yeah, it was after the wall went up, and you, yeah, you think that's weird because by 68 they would they would play separate. Um, and then uh, moving on to 64 Tokyo Olympics, um, they were originally awarded to play them in 1940. Tokyo was they were supposed to have the 1940 Olympics, uh, but they were canceled due to World War II. Obviously, um, it was the first time they ever telecast the game. So this is when we still really started developing an audience for it here in America. Again, my boy Abebe won uh, the marathon. Uh, first time anyone had ever repeated Did he have that. Shoes this time, I believe he had shoes. Yes. <laughs> uh, new sports again. You know, you started getting. They started finally adding some women's sports in a little bit more as this was still an upcoming thing. Uh, women's volleyball was introduced along with women's pentathlon. So you're seeing a lot of changes starting to happen with the culture as well, and and, and women's rights starting to be become more common uh, obviously now it's much you know all sports that pretty much have women in but at this era it was not a common thing 
And then just wrapping out the the last couple of the decade, we had the the Grenoble France Olympics in '68 for the winner. Um, and this was a big deal because it's the first time they introduced drug testing and gender testing to make sure women were women. Um, which was, was a problem with East Germany. It was yeah, it was very all the women had beards. <laughs> um, so the. Uh, this is the first time a mascot ever came in with the Olympics, which would be a big thing. Obviously, I, I even have a tattoo of an Olympic mascot on me, um, so it would become Freaking a windlock. it would become a thing. And this was the first time you ever had one. It was a little creepy skier guy, um, and it was actually the first time the USSR didn't win the medal count since they be they started competing as a team. Uh, it was actually won by Norway. So finally, you know that somebody else took them out of their high horse. <laughs> and then the last one we had was Country actually that you would typically think would win a lot of medals at the Winter Games. Yeah, and then finally again pointing back to how it relates to cultural things, you know, I, I wasn't really familiar with this until I was doing a lot of research because um, it's, you know, not a game I'd ever really done much research on, but in the 68 Mexico games really reflected, again, what's going on in the culture. There was a, a lot of controversy. There was a massacre of about three to 400 protesters in Mexico City like a week before the game started. That, that's that been really highly criticized, and most people now, this obviously referred to as a massacre um, because the government just mowed down these these protesters. And this literally happened a week before the games. And so, you know, we talk about now how people say the world's an upheaval when there's all these events. And this wasn't the only time, obviously. You know, the world had a lot of crazy things going on in the 60s, even bringing it down to the Olympics, you know, something like that. And I, and I know Mexico City, um, I did some research a few years back about this and this about the Olympic Games. And this is the one that kind of stuck, stuck out to me. Uh, Mexico City was at a very, very high elevation. And from then on, the IOC said we are never doing another games in an elevation like this. I guess there was a lot of issues. And then I believe uh, pollution maybe too? It's a possibility. There's so many things that went on with this game. You had the the, the protests that went on. You had the Black Panther salute, um, which obviously was really controversial. Um, You had the silent protest of a Czechoslovakian gymnast against when she... um, one got second place to a, a Soviet Union player, and during the uh, anthem, the Soviet anthem, just like bowed her head, uh, which was like she was pretty much, you know, blacklisted uh, in in the USSR for that, um, and it was never allowed to really compete or do anything again. So, I mean, you, you had a lot of this reflection sport, I think, really reflecting just like everything else, everything that was going on time. So, there's the Olympics for you. We'll hit up the 70s next time around. Be a little bit less to go through. But uh, what do you got on on our sports? For okay, the- so I'm going to go through most of our major sports. Um, you know, baseball was the key game during up to this point. Um, you know, and this was the time where baseball started to change. Um, the big thing was the Yankee dominance. The Yankees had dominated baseball since the 1920s, and this was the first decade where that dominance was coming to an end. They actually went to five World Series during the decade, but only won two of them and lost three. So they were kind of, you know, on the tail end of that dynasty. Um, the Dodgers and Cardinals, they went two and one in the World Series during this decade, and the Orioles went one and one. So you could kind of see that change happening. Um, also, this is when baseball decided that um, there was some talk of getting a continental league together, um, and they were trying to get that started. So the um, Major League Baseball decided to start an expansion. Uh, and in 1961 and ex- 1962, they added four new teams the Los Angeles Angels, the Washington Senators, the Houston Colt. 45s, which became the Astros, and the New York Mets. Uh, and then they also did another expansion in 1969 with the Kansas City Royals, Montreal Expo, San Diego Padres, and the Seattle Pilots, who eventually became the Milwaukee Brewers. Um, but this was kind of the last decade where baseball was the dominant sport. Um, and as you've seen, towards the end of the decade, we got the first Super Bowl, Super Bowl I. Um, and this was a culmination of a rival league, the AFL, starting in the early 1960s with the Kansas City Chiefs, the Los Angeles Raiders, uh, and they were stealing a lot of those players from the NFL. Um, never before had a, a league been so close to the NFL. Um, there have been other leagues before then that had popped up, but none of them were as good as the AFL was. And in 1960. This 1966 season actually happened in 1967. They held the first Super Bowl. It was actually called the AFL, uh, NFL AFL Championship game as opposed to that. Um, the Packers won the first two over the Chiefs and over the Raiders. And then at the very end of the decade, we had the 1968 January 1969 Super Bowl um, was the first time that the AFL um, they were working on a merger at this time and 
uh, is the famous guarantee by Joe Namath. I guarantee victory. Uh, and they actually beat the Colts in the Super Bowl. Um, so that was kind of, that is what, I mean, our modern NFL is built on those first three Super Bowls, especially um, Super Bowl three in 1969. If that wouldn't have happened, the NFL would probably be a whole lot different place right now. Uh, and then you also seen hockey starting to come up. Um, for the entirety, the entire history of hockey, it had been the original six teams. And hockey decided in the 1960s that they were going to start doing an expansion as well. And they actually added, um, let me see, they added uh, the California Seals, which is a team that doesn't exist anymore, the LA Kings, the Minnesota North Stars, the Philadelphia Flyers, the St. Louis Blues, and our Pittsburgh Penguins. Penguins. Uh, so they went from six teams up to 12 at this point, and then they continued up to that expansion to where Where was the, the California Seals at? I'd like to know. California, I, I don't know. <laughs> what city they were actually based yeah, on? I don't think they're in L.A., obviously. Yeah, it wouldn't in, seem likely. <laughs> I forgot where they were. Um, it's just kind of sad. I wonder what happened to them. But you see in this decade where professional sports are starting to become a lot more popular. It was all dominated by baseball, and even baseball decided the times were changing. And they all, had to all I'm hearing thing. is expansion, expansion, expansion. It was a dec- decade of expansion. Every, That's every where, the sports were. I, I think this, you know, comes back to the television becoming a part of it too. I mean, I don't know definitely how much hockey was, but I know baseball and, and footballs were getting a lot of airplay. Yes, they on were television. getting a lot of airplay on television. Um, you know, and the sports just kind of started growing. This was the big, the biggest time of expansion for you know professional sports for both hockey, football, and uh, baseball. Unfortunately, I can't speak too much to basketball. It's not my, it's not my deal. So um, you know, I think that's kind of all we have to really go over for sports, and we can move on to um, our final category, culture. Yeah, culture. So I mean. This one is really hard to define because everything we've talked about, you should kind of have an understanding about the culture of what was going on, about what people were into a little bit because you're starting to see these things that, that people were into, you know. Um, I, I mean, I think you, you started really to develop the um, the generation of the, the t- television child, the child that's grow- really being reared on television every day, watching it. This became a much more common thing. Um I, I mean, I, I, I don't know. I, I think that one has a big change on how people view the world and how in, view, people view information. I would say reading became less a part of a lot of people's lives. Not that, I, you know, it wasn't already impacted by the 50s and radio and the, and the earlier eras. Um, but I would say this is an era where you started to see... I mean, when people think of the the early '60s, think about you know the kids in Animal House and how like that that society was represented, those kids and the way they they acted, and how the rebels were were the the house the uh, what was the name of their house Lambda no the Omegas the Omegas I'm thinking of Lambda 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 from yeah, that's Revenge, from Revenge of the Nerds, of the nerds. <laughs> um, but I mean you think of how these guys were presented as these rebels. And all everybody else in the school was these, you know, good, clean kids and things like that. And, yeah, I, think, I think the biggest thing that's striking to me is um, I've watched older sports events and stuff like that, and that's where you can really kind of see how people were at the time. Um, and if you watch a baseball game from 1960, you'll see everybody at the game in a shirt and tie with a jacket and a hat on. This was the style of the 1950s and the 1940s, um, and it was a predominant style all the way up until 1960. Then you watch a game from 1970, and everybody is wearing jackets, t-shirts, jeans. Um, you know, it was a much more casual, you know, kind of change uh, going well, from, you know, when I go out, I'm going to look the part, look professional, look like an upstanding citizen, to, uh, I just want to throw this on, I'm going to... I just want to feel comfortable. Even the way the like the teens are represented, like I, I always think of, you know, another example from uh, Kids in '62, another film that it places that reflects the era would be uh, American Graffiti, where you have the kids in the button-up shirts and, and the the slacks and, and and everything like that. Even even the casual teenagers were still kind of properly wearing collared shirts and and things like that. And so by the end of the decade, though, you had the you know in the late '60s, you had the counterculture movement starting to come in with all the hippies, the hippies, all the psychedelic stuff. And it became stuff, all, all this much more about being drugs. comfortable and casual and being who you are and all this and that, and not having to live by society's rules. And so I think the fashion of the era definitely the late the fashion of the late sixties um, would would bleed over into that. I always think of um, you know the the clothes that like the kids were wearing, and even though you know majority of it takes place in the beginning of the seventies, 
um, Brady Bunch started in 59. There were these proper dressed kids and everything like that. And, and that's kind of what I think of when I think of the early 60s. And then by the time it gets to the, to the late 60s, you know, you're seeing all these, these definitely new styles, a lot of different, um, fashion was coming out in there. Um, and I, th- I think you can tell a lot by, by the fashion of what was going on in the decade. And one of the key things that I, I went through all the decades and I figured out, well, what was the facial hair like? You know, during these times, that can kind of give you an idea. So, when you started the decade, you went, everybody was clean shaven. If you weren't, if you had any stubble or anything like that, you were like, oh my gosh, you were the talk of this town. You were so defiant and such a rebel. But by the 19, by the end of 1969, beards were commonplace. Beards were everywhere. All these guys, these hippie guys, were getting in touch with their manly, you know, testosterone filled selves or whatever i don't know what it was but you find clean shaven in 1960 by 1969 beards are prevalent everywhere yeah. it still wasn't the most popular uh facial hair style and clean shaven has always been number one throughout the decades but you see you know a large section of the population that was full-on beards at this time uh so you can kind of just tell between that the shirt and tie the jeans you can see the difference in the culture that was going on at this time a lot of that probably had to do with tv a lot of it had to do with music uh kind of coming back full circle all the uh turmoil that was going on at the time you know the vietnam war all that stuff all that stuff kind of went into what i would say is is partially a decay of a society that you had before um you know, it's an it's, interesting way of defining it. it. I mean, it's an accurate way. It's the decay of what was making way for what's new um, and the change because, you know, things are constantly shifting. But for a while it, it did kind of, you know, not to say it was stagnant, but that was the perception of a lot of people, especially now looking back, we have of the era in the, the 50s and, it, you know, that being a pretty stable era minus, you know, all the Red Scare and stuff like that. Um, but in, in the normal day-to-day life, um, you know, it was it was a very calm existence in the 1950s. The 1960s was much much crazier day to day life. Much more tumultuous. Yeah, I, I read up that the crime rate between 1960 and 1970 skyrocketed in the United States. Crime was rampant, and those numbers have never dropped down to pre 1960 numbers. Uh, it, that decade changed everything across the board uh no decade like i said no decade in the history of mankind has done as much uh change in the world as the 1960s and you know if as we're going through this if, as we've gone through this and you don't believe that you need to go look up some history read about the 1960s because it's it's crazy the way the world changed during this decade 10 small years 10 short years um and the world just changed irrevocably. Oh yeah, and I would say, you know, um I don't I know we haven't talked about this, but I would say we're kind of in, you know, we talk about the 60s and how people are you know saying this and that. I kind of feel like we're in the same kind of transition phase that we were in the 60s. We had the, you know, with the advent of, I mean, technology had been developing and developing, but, you know, especially we can talk to the the smartphone and all the social media stuff that's come out and all those things in the last years. And I think we're definitely at that kind of point where everything's now shifting again, um, where we're seeing a lot of people feeling um, more empowered than they ever would before because of the te- the means of communications and technology with each other and so and communicating and we see this a lot in our in our world nowadays and I think we're kind of at that same tipping point so I definitely agree uh, it, it is the one of the most you know important times to, as far as culturally and what happening in the world is going to see the most broad stroke changes of any of the decades we're going to go through. But I kind of feel like we're in that same position now. And, and I, I have to disagree. Uh, while we're going through a big change now, and while things are kind of, you know, up and down, kind of crazy, um, it's got nothing on the 1960s. Ooh, I mean, I, it's it's hard to, you know, I'm living through this decade. Uh, never lived through the 1960s. But just what I know about the 1960s, I mean, it, it's probably, we're probably going through, I wouldn't even say the craziest time in the last 50 years since then it probably is but i mean it doesn't come close to the 1960s oh, i think I, well i like that we'll just have to continue to screen and i'd like to discuss this at some other point in the future um because i wholeheartedly strongly disagree but to just kind of wrap everything around um to back to the point you know excluding uh 
culture for me at least because it's kind of hard to define that. I kind of went through and I realized that there's some big things I really like and I just kind of want to, as we go through this, kind of point out the things that I think stood out the most for me in each of these sections we talked about. So hold on. This is going to be a sort of final countdown. Sort of. <laughs> so uh, just to bring it back to the first category we talked about, we talked about current events and then uh, for me, I think the, you know, the most important thing that happened, the biggest event that stands out to me uh, as far as and, and how it was for the world and how it relates to me personally and everything like that, I got to go with the moon landing. Um, I think the moon landing was was like the defining moment, the cap on the end of the the decade. It expressed you know everything from the the advances in technology to television, with the, it being one of the most watched events by people around the world. Um, and in communication, event, you know, again, technology being able to, to pass this around to everyone uh, to see it, and uh, everything about it, I think, defines the decade. And it, to me, it's absolutely the most important um, thing that happened and, and best thing that happened during that that decade. Uh, and if I had to say the worst, I mean, just the continuing Cold War and how it how it uh, kind of just was hard on uh, like this constant fear of annihilation. July 20th, 1969, what I would argue is one of the most important and defining moments in the entirety of human history, the moon landing. Number one event from the 1960s. Uh, I think there's no question. Um, It is the dividing line in between what used to be and what's to come. The past, the way we lived our lives before, were changed on that day when human beings set their first you know put their first footsteps on a foreign world and if the human race is going to continue for any length of period of time it's in the stars that we're going to go and so this is by far it was the easiest pick here and i mean not even close uh the moon landing was the most important and my favorite event from the 1960s um i'd have to say the worst event though um kind of that old world stuff um you know the cultural revolution in china during the 1960s was ridiculous um you know you talk about you know this is uh, as close as probably has come in our lifetimes or you know some of our lifetimes to the holocaust in you know world war ii and between you know the numbers are really hard to pin down but between 400,000 and 3 million people were killed during the cultural revolution when china decided that we're going to go over to a much more communist society and got rid of all the traditionalists in the country and all the western influence uh and it was a really crazy time for china um you know that's going to be my worst event of the decade yeah and and moving on you know to our next category uh music uh, what, what would you say d- your defining moment, the the most important thing of it? I think I know. Uh, yeah, it's already been stated. Um, the Beatles, Ed yeah. Sullivan. Uh, yeah. The important, most important moment in music, in quite arguably all time as well. Um, you know, it changed the face of music forever. Yeah, and, and I mean, I have to 100 percent agree with you. I don't have it as specified to the day they premiered on the. Uh, Ed Sullivan show, but um, just the Beatles in general and their impact on on everything from music to culture to um, people's views on life and the world, like it, it changed so many things. Um, what would you say if you had to pick the the bottom of the barrel for music? I'm sorry, I gotta say folk music. I am not a big fan of folk music. Um, Interesting. I went through a period in the mid 90s where i was all about like woodstock and stuff like that and there was a couple of good songs in there but i i honestly think you know folk music is something that it, music is much more important than somebody sitting around a campfire singing a song that that is part of it obviously but i think on a on a na- national scale on a worldwide scale that uh, folk music is that guy sitting around playing you know, a guitar around a campfire, whereas what you have on the other end of the spectrum, the Beatles, that's like stadium music. That's like what what music should be um, on a worldwide scale. Not that I have a problem with people sitting around on a campfire playing a song, but there's just there's a huge disparity there. Well, remember, Dylan plugged in at some point, so he. he so I, I bet I gotta go folk music. It's probably interesting. And it, I mean, not that it's bad, like I said, but it's just 
my least favorite part of yeah. the, the music scene. Uh, for me, uh, I'm going to go with uh, the Rolling Stones um, because I'm tired of having to listen to people say, you know, put the Rolling Stones anywhere on the same level as the Beatles, and I just can't. They don't belong there. Exactly. And for me, that's the only reason I could pick them. There's nothing more to say. Uh, they're na- not even close. All uh, right. So movies and TV, what's your most important or favorite moment from the 60s about movies so TV. i do mine kind of weird i can't i love these these are so important to me i don't care how you're doing yours i'm picking one from each because i got to do that because i needs to get out my my love for the genre and i really really love for as far as tv the twilight zone it's amazing not picking star trek um for me but the twilight zone is such a masterpiece um it's arguably one of the greatest shows ever made. Um, even with, even cause it has down at, even though know, not even factoring in, yeah, there's going to be down episodes, but the things it did, the way it presented stories, some of the concepts it did were so well done. So ahead of its time, the things they did on budgets, sometimes it was cheesy. Sometimes it was perfect. Sometimes it was really dark. Sometimes it was like, what did I just watch? And that's what I loved about it. And, and I think you can't, compare any other show to it um, from any other anthology show, any other show to it because there's nothing else like it. Um, even shows later that would come like Outer Limits, which actually the original came before it and the later 90s version, all of these shows, you know, now we have shows like Black Mirror, nothing like it. Uh, as far as movies, uh, that was pretty easy for me. Um, I, I had to go with Charade. Um, it has my two favorite non-living actors in it. That would be Audrey Hepburn and Cary Grant. Uh, it's generally referred to as the best uh, Hitchcock film Hitchcock never made. And, uh, I, I mean, it's in public domain, I believe, so you can probably watch it on YouTube. I think, you, I think that it is on YouTube. Yeah. And we actually, on our normal full version of our clip here, we actually play uh, quotes from it. That's how you get your name, Mr. Joshua. Joshua. Yeah, so, I mean, this for me is hands down the, the film of the decade. It, it, it's, it's, it's genius. So, uh, you? I, I combine both of them since it is just one category. I did movies and TV, um, and I'm going to have to go with the number one event of the decade for movies or TV was Star Trek. I, I mean, we are huge Star Trek fans, obviously, so there's not really a whole lot that needs to be said about that. And my least favorite moment of the entire decade was the cancellation of Star Trek. <laughs> uh, the 1970s changed all of that, and there's a reason why we still have Star Trek around this day. Um but it only lasted for three seasons, 79 episodes. But those 79 episodes changed our lives uh, in a big way, as, as much as you know a pop culture item can. But uh, So Star Trek, number one, the cancellation of Star Trek, the worst, and number one. For me, hands down, the worst is Bonnie and Clyde. Just, it, I did not like um, the film. I didn't like how it changed the genre of films as a whole in, in the United States and how they were produced and made. And we'll talk about this obviously more next uh, next episode when we get to the '70s, because uh, this film would have lasting uh, uh, impacts with that. Um, so there you go, my bottom. Moving on to sports. What about your worst TV? Um, well, I didn't actually think about that. If I had to pick, uh, hmm, probably the same as you. Cancellation of Star Trek was a big deal to me um, because, well, I don't know. Maybe you know, it kind of it good because it left people hungry for more. And that's how we ended up with what we got later. So maybe not. Um, I'm going to say um, Mission Impossible. Yeah, because I have to put up with those stupid movies. All right. <laughs> uh, so moving on to sports. Uh, number one sports event or thing that happened in the decade. Obviously going to go with something from the Olympics here. My boy Abebe uh, with his uh, win in the marathon barefoot. I mean, come on. We don't talk about these things anymore about, like, that's a monumentous event. I mean, I know we don't have the developments and shoes that we do nowadays to make them make you run faster and all this and that. But I mean, he beat everybody else, and then he came back and did it again four years later, first time ever repeat. Come on, that's a monumentous event. And and hands down, worse for me is I mean the fact that in '68 we had to get into drug testing and gender testing. I mean. <sighs> The, the whole point of the Olympics was supposed to be the love of sport and the, co- the friendly competition between the, the best athletes from around the world uh, who can bring their experience to it and, and show, represent their country, represent themselves. And this is like what, made, what makes the Olympics so beautiful. And the fact that we got to the point now where we have to, and I mean we have to because the people don't, I mean some people don't you care about. You can't trust the people. Yeah, people don't care about winning honestly anymore. Um, and, and it's just sad that we got to that point, and it's just again an example of what happened in that decade. So for me, uh, 
being a Pittsburgh fan, I, I have to go with Game 7 of the 1960 World Series between the Pittsburgh Pirates and the New York Yankees. Probably, arguably, the greatest baseball game of all time. Definitely the greatest ending of all time. A uh, walk-off ninth-inning home run to uh, beat the Yankees, the dominant Yankees, um, by Bill Mazeroski. Got to be my number one. Um, I don't have a number two or a number. Uh, I don't have a negative sports event. I think sports became professional sports anyway. Became a big deal in the 1960s, and there really isn't anything that I can point to as being a bad event. Honestly, I couldn't do it. I'm sure we'll come up with some other ones in the decades to come. Yes. <laughs> um, well, there you go. So those are our, our, our tops from uh, the different the different you know subjects we discussed today um so that, that's our kind of in a nutshell our our, our views on the 60s um do you have any wrap-up thoughts if you had to have like a, a summary statement of how you feel about the 60s um and what it you know what it means to you like i said earlier um and i, I think i said it much better than i'm going to say it now the single most important decade 10 years in the entirety entire history of humankind um and I know there's going to be more decades in the future that will, you know, surpass it. But right now, it's number one on the all-time decades list of the most things uh, that happened, the most changes to mankind across the world um, happened in the 1960s. Um, not saying that it's my favorite decade, uh, but it was definitely the most important decade of all time. There you go. And I, my thoughts is, um, while not people don't, you know, aren't as nostalgia for it as the 50s or some of the later decades that we're looking at now um, that people are really into, uh, such as the 80s and the 90s. The 60s is a decade that is often kind of seen in a very positive light because people see a lot of the the pop culture things from that era and, and all of that, and they don't really see what else was going. They don't look at the broader pictures of the darker side of the decade and the things that were happening and how they were changing the world. I don't think that's something that people constantly um, have a, a mindset about them to pay attention to because we like to, you know, we like to put the curtain over our eyes. We like to see what we want to see and pretend things were, you know, better than in a different era. And the 60s was a really dark time. Um, it was it was dark. It was a transition period from the beginning of the 60s to the end of the 60s. Um, the you know leave it to Beaver lifestyle that a lot of people viewed the, the us as having would disappear and would stop being a part of our world. So uh, change change is a coming. So it's just change. It's just like good luck, change is a coming. So um, so there you go. That's that's the 60s. Um, so did you have a you know as we like to wrap up every episode, we have ourselves our pick of the week. Um, it doesn't necessarily have to be from the 60s. Do you have any? Uh, what's your pick of the week this week? I always try to put my picks of the week that they have to do with what's going on at the time or some kind of relevance to what we're doing. Um, so I'm going to say and something that we didn't even bring up. Um, you know, I talked a lot about the Beatles, and I can name you some Beatles albums that you should go check out. But what I'm going to tell you is uh, I love The Doors. And The Doors, pretty much the entirety of their time, uh, was during the 1960s, this counterculture idea. So I would say go check out the first Doors album, The Doors, classic hits on it like Break On Through, Light My, uh, Light My Fire. And then probably their most important song, I think, is The End. Um, so I'm going to say The Doors, The Doors. Pick of the month, pick of the year, pick of the week, pick of the decade. There you go. Um, so for me, I'm kind of go. Yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna try and go with this as we're going through as well and pick something uh, from the decade. And again, probably there's other things that I would you know much more personal to me as I already mentioned. Charade, Hundred One Dalmatians. I didn't even mention during it. One of my my only Disney movies. I'm a fan of. Um, I gotta pick something though that's a little different. That's from my boy Billy Wilder, Best Picture winner. Um, the apartment, 1960. Um, Jack Lemmon, Shirley MacLaine, Fred McMurray. Um, definitely the end. Of, uh, kind of. It's it's weird. It's a slapstick comedy, but it's it's really not. Um, it's not for everyone. It's definitely a 60s film. It's very talky. Um, visually, I think it's beautiful. Great black and white. It was the last black and white film to win uh, Best Picture uh, up until um, the Schindler's List, and that wasn't completely black and white anyway. Um, but that's my pick, apartment. So, uh, 
there you go. There's our picks of the week. There's the 60s. And uh, we hope you enjoyed it. I hope you come back. We're going to be doing the 70s uh, next. I, obviously, I would hope that was obvious since we're going forward through the decades, um, if I didn't make that clear. Um, but, yeah, there you go. Uh, thanks for joining us. Check us out on uh, Podbean. Check us out on YouTube. Um, hopefully, we'll be uh, uploading these episodes. So I'm kind of behind on the YouTube episodes, but hopefully, we'll have them up. So check us out there. Check us out on Facebook. We are Shrek Talk, the nerd generation. Go away or I shall taunt you a second time.